Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. So far, patch 9.2 has been pretty light on the class tuning side, but it doesn't mean that our classes are still the same on the testing realms. A lot of the tier set bonuses and in the future double legendaries are looking to change our classes in maybe even drastic ways. However, some of these tier sets so far have been awesome and I'm hoping some of these passes might even become part of a toolkit going forward way after Shadowlands. Recently, we got some new updates for patch 9.2. Today, I want to highlight the changes that the Death Knight tier set is going through, as well as the Rogue tier set, which saw a lot of praise at the very beginning, but still needs some work. And this is the first for the new build, but we got some class changes, primarily for elemental and enhancement with a slight damage buff for restoration. So let's go over these updates where the classes are heading into patch 9.2 and I'll give you guys my opinions of what I think of them. But right before that, most of you guys watching these videos are still not subscribed. So if you're watching these videos anyway, you might as well hit subscribe as well as hit the bell, especially if you want to be caught up to all the regular World of Warcraft updates, particularly for patch 9.2 and beyond. We'll start off with the changes plan for the three specs of Death Knights, starting off with Frost. The biggest weakness for Frost Death Knights right now is their two-piece set bonus isn't super exciting. On paper, it's a strong tier set, gaining that much secondary stats for pressing a button is huge numerically. But it doesn't make for an interactive and engaging rotation because your rotation essentially doesn't change, you just get a passive buff with your abilities. Unlike your four piece, which lets you play different talents like obliteration, which might eventually lead Death Knights in the future to prioritize two handed weapons instead of the dual wield playstyle. And that choice of weapons even comes with a variety of different talents that better synergize into that specific playstyle. Because of this, they actually want to change the two piece to maybe synergize better as part of the four piece and have one tier set bonus feed into the other like so many classes already experience. For Blood Death Knights, their 4 piece bonus is amazing. Whenever you summon your runic weapon, your parry chances go up. And every time you're parrying an enemy, you fire off a heart strike back at the target. So in a Mythic Plus scenario, when you have 20 plus targets to parry, your weapon is constantly shooting out heart strikes, which builds a ton of runic power and also a ton of damage. You literally become the one man army in a Mythic Plus, though the set does fall short inside of a raid. Parrying 20 enemies, that's a lot of heart strikes, but parrying one boss, that's a lot less value. To fix this disbalance, the future strategy might be to reduce the amount of free heart strikes you get from parrying, but the free heart strikes you get from the 4 piece will build you the strength buff that you get from the 2 piece bonus, which should hopefully even out the power gains between raiding and dungeons. For Unholy Death Knights, they got some bugs to solve, like making sure the pets actually do gain the attack speed bonus, and also figuring out how they can get the Soul Reaper, proc, and the talent to not overlap each other. There's also a question of how should the 4 piece function. Some players have brought up the idea that when you summon a free undead, right now it's just a normal ghoul, but what if with certain talents it could be a Mages of the Dead? which provides far more damage than a normal ghoul would. And the devs are open to the idea, which might lead to later class tunings, but they're open to the idea of how that tier set should function depending on the talents that you run. The main thing to point out here is the continued discussion between the players and the devs of how death it should function, and the fact that devs are very much open to the player feedback since the players are the ones playing the classes in the end. If the classes are not fun to play, then the tier sets are a failure, no matter how much damage numbers numerically the tier sets provide. Next, we got some upcoming changes for rogue tier sets. Majority of the player feedback has been that these tier sets feel very single target focused with not a lot of room for AoE. The blue post expresses that that was their design, is to really make assassination shine in pure single target fights. But that doesn't mean it has to be at the detriment of AoE. Therefore, the two piece bonus is gonna go through changes. Your shift will now increase the crit chance of all your crits on any enemy by 100%. To me, this sounds like a buff that Assassination will gain rather than the debuff you put on a target. And if this is a real tier set going forward, this just sounds insanely strong. We'll find out exactly how this functions in the next testing build, but this sounds really awesome and I cannot wait to try this out. For Outlaw Rogue, they love the idea that the rate of pistol shots has been greatly increased. Though the 4 piece where you get a free between the eyes and the crit value of it, especially in AoE, just doesn't seem nearly as strong. The Express doesn't want to keep the bullet stacking aspect of the spec, but the tier set for 2 piece and 4 piece is most likely going to see a rework. Subtlety is looking to get even more complex, gaining a lot of the interactivity between legendaries, conduits and more that have to play off of the 2 piece and 4 piece set bonuses. The 4 piece effect of subtlety allows you, when spending calm points, a chance to shadow strike every nearby target. 
although not all the passives and legendaries can function with this free shadow strike. They want to make the four piece function better with the anima charge column points of the Kyrian Covenant's Echo and Reprimand ability, which is a pretty big buff. They want to make sure that the shadow strikes from four piece triggers the two piece, which is also a pretty big buff. They also want the shadow strikes to apply fine weakness to the target, which is a massive buff, especially in AoE. They want it to trigger from Akari's Soul Fragment Legendary, which is a massive single target damage output, and even one for AoE, and they want it to work from the preferred Veins Conduit, which will buff the damage of Gloomblade and Backstabs after so many Shadow Strikes. All of these bugs, as Blizzard says, we all thought were features. We thought that if it had this kind of interaction, that it would be an overpowered 2-piece and 4-piece, and we were pretty happy and satisfied with what we had. But the fact that Blizzard wants to make all these fixes to make subtlety even stronger, there's so many cool interactions that are about to come in the next build. Though all these new interactions might mean a future nerf to subtlety to counterbalance all of these changes. TLDR, you guys should be looking at rogues very closely and maybe even leveling one for patch 9.2 because every single week we're looking stronger and stronger with our tier set changes. And to save the best for last, we got some actual class changes upcoming in the next BTR build. First, tier set changes. For Elemental Shaman, your Elementals of Fire and Primal Fire abilities now will have 90% less mana cost, so your Elementals that you're constantly summoning with your tier set bonus will no longer run out of mana. Next, Enhancement Shaman tier set, the free Feral Spirits that you summon with your tier set bonus no longer occupy a totem slot. They found out that when you summon too many totems and too many feral spirits, some of those things start to despawn. Therefore, they're removing feral spirits out of the totems so you can have more consistent damage and the procs related to those wolves. Both of these changes are pretty massive buffs for shaman tier sets going forward. Next, we have general shaman changes for all three specs. Flame Shock will now have a maximum target cap of 6, probably to play better into the elemental tier set value and legendary interaction. Frost Shock damage has been increased by 40% for all three specs, including Restoration, which is a pretty nice buff for the instant cast aspect of the playstyle. Elemental Conduit Venthyr Shaman Legendary will now also cause Flame Shock critical strikes, whether direct damage or damage over time, to reduce the cooldown of Chain Harvest by one second. This is a pretty big buff for the Venthyr Shamans going forward into patch 9.2. Because of the buffs towards Frost Shock, Ice Fury Talon has been slightly nerfed to account for the base damage to Frost Shock itself. And finally, huge buffs for Enhancement Shaman. Lava Lash Rank 2, a passive effect gained at level 22, will now cause your Lava Lash to spread Flame Shock to up to 3 enemy targets within 8 yards in addition to the Lava Lash cooldown reduction. This is a passive Enhancement Shamans used to have in a previous expansion, and I'm gonna take a guess maybe Warlord of Janor, that allowed you to spread Flame Shock across multiple enemies and then spam Fire Nova, which is now a talent for Enhancement. This synergy and this combination going forward in AoE could be massive. Then we got some conduit changes, primarily dealing with scaling. Unruly Wind's Conduit changed from 20% at its lowest with 35 at its highest to 15% at its lowest with 50% at its highest rank. This means higher ranks of Unruly Winds are going to generate even bigger value going forward. Same thing for Magnifist. Scaling changed from 15% lowest and 25 highest to 12% lowest and 37.2 rank highest. Focus Lightning Conduit scaling got changed drastically with 5 at the lowest to 12 at the highest as the new values, instead of 1% at slowest, 4.5% at the highest. This means any ability that uses Maelstrom to become instacast gains huge value, whether it is the Elemental Blast from the Talents, Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning as a base ability, or even the Venthyr Covenant and its Chain Harvest. Even the Conduit for Chill to the Core scaling got changed from 21 lowest, 35 highest to 30 at its lowest, 72 highest, which synergized super well into the frost shock damage increase that Chill to the Core can now benefit from. If you're an Enhancement Shaman, these are some of the better changes going forward. You're looking at not only tier set more wolves and more consistency with those puppy dogs, but now Lava Lash spreading your flame shocks to make Fire Nova a finally functional build 
could be really exciting, and a lot of the conduit adjustments are looking to give Enhancement Shaman some serious power gains. Where I think a lot of these changes are heading into is primarily buffing the AoE damage of Enhancement. Sure, a lot of these conduits and tier sets are going to buff your overall damage output, like single target damage, but the AoE damage from the Lava Lash and the Fire Nova playstyle, or Frost Shock Chill to the Core synergy, together with Hailstrom Talent, or maybe even the focused lightning playstyle as you chain lightning enemies and hit them with a chain harvest, your AoE damage numbers are definitely going to go up. I'm super excited to try this class out once we get double legendaries on top of all these changes, and I think it has my shamans by themselves are some of the strongest legendaries of any classes in the game. So I am really excited to see some of the explosive combinations players might be able to come up with for enhancement shamans going forward. Anyway, these are the changes that are planned on paper, but so far a lot of them do sound good. To summarize, a lot of the changes as of recently, over this week and the last, Blizzard has been going back towards some of the tier sets and adjusting them so there's some actual gameplay value, listening to player feedback and trying to add some more interesting gameplay options towards the same classes of Shadowlands. And they really are open to the different possibilities that players could get creative with. As seen with the subtlety road changes for the set going forward, the bug fixes is really just opening up more possibilities of what subtlety can run in the different talent combinations and even legendary combinations. And finally, even though it seems pretty weird to say that towards the end of the expansion we're getting these, but some class changes with awesome design for shamans in particular, like enhancement shaman changes, are opening up so many possibilities going forward after Shadowlands. I very doubt that this is going to happen, but if every class got this kind of treatment, this could be one of the best endgame patches possible. But again, we'll wait and see how it's going to develop, it's still pretty early into PTR, but I cannot help but get excited about some of these changes going forward because they're so good. So happy to see the continued interaction between the devs and the players and the changes based on that feedback. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about these updates? And which class do you think should get a second look and get the same shaman treatment going forward in 9.2? Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you guys in another update for patch 9.2.